Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Frank Jeppy TV. Um, I get a lot of questions asked in my stream about um, tips on DPS and how to get more DPS in dungeons and stuff. So I figured I'd make a video for you explaining some of the unspoken rules in Neverwinter about getting more DPS. Um, before we get started on that, I just want to say thank you for the uh, 120 subs and the 20,000 views so far on the channel. Appreciate the support. And uh, if you want to see more videos or have ideas of what I should do, just leave it in in the comments below and I will see what I can do for you um, so let's get underway with these um, these tips from DPS um in this game it doesn't matter how well your stats are and how well you know you have a rotation you're only as good as the support and the buffs that you have with you so uh, the first tip is knowing the buffs of your group uh, for example when you're fighting a boss the bosses buffs and debuffs will pop up under his name um, so you want to make sure you're looking for certain ones uh, and a cleric you want to make sure you're looking for break the spirit obviously you can't really tell what the buffs there but break the spirit looks like the emblem that's cooling down right there on the your left of the toolbar um, that's the, one of the biggest ones for the cleric especially if you're an AA cleric uh, you, again, you just want to make sure that your buffs are online, so you're doing as much DPS as possible. You're you're hitting your big moves when all your buffs and debuffs for your group are out there. Um, another one is Prophecy of Doom. Uh, that's another one for the cleric, usually a Dio cleric. Um, there's other ones out there. There's uh, Into the Fray. There's uh, Long Strider Shot for the the GF and the long shot shot for the HR and there's um, hollow ground for the another cleric one and there's pillar of power for the scourge you know things like that you just want to get in the habit of watching the buffs and watching when is the best time to hit your big move and all that good stuff um, another one for the cleric is the passive terrifying insight so when you're running a dungeon with two clerics try to stay closer to the Dio Cleric because the Dio Cleric's uh, insight is a passive which has a uh, a range on it I'll go ahead and show you the range here in a second 120 so anyone between 120 it will get you the 20% increase of damage so if you're outside of that you're missing 20% so if you're range, if you're a range tech, please know where your DO cleric is at, and please know where your other AA clerics at because ca them casting AA on you and your companion is very vital to doing damage in this game. Um, AA is still a thing, even though it's been nerfed last month. It's still a thing. So as you see, I keep hitting these, these uh. These encounters, and you see the buffs stacking up and stacking up and stacking up. Um, unfortunately on the PC, or unfortunately on the console, the buffs only stack so much until you start seeing, uh, dots. So, there's still buffs out there, it's just, you want to know what they look like on your toolbar up top where your boss's health is. Um, we're going to switch characters and we're going to talk about some other stuff on my main here. I just wanted to show you some of the buffs that... Are associated with the cleric so you guys know what to look for um, this like I said this is probably the biggest part of doing damage is knowing your buffs and knowing when to go off because you can have a solid rotation and great stats but if you're not hitting your powers along with the cleric or the GF or the pally pally has a nice one now um the aura of courage so if you're running with the pally and not a GF, make sure you have the hit point boon on. The hit point boon, hit point boon will increase your damage if the pally is using Aura of Courage. Just send him a message. Ask him if he's using the passive Aura of Courage. And if he is, slide on your hit point boon. You'll do more damage. I don't know the the, uh, the actual equation to figure out if you're going to do more damage for, say, Switching out a hit point boon, hit point boon for a like a defense boon if you're a great weapon fighter or not. But uh, I can get you that equation. I can put it down in the the comment section 
for you guys. So you guys can figure it out for yourself if you are going to do more damage from switching from one or another. So I'll give you that equation and you guys can do the math for yourself. Um, as we switch in loading, we're going to talk about your companion. Um, for most people in the game, they want to gear up their main and not worry about their companion. But um, how the, your companion works is you get a percent of your companion stats. So once you reach 100% of your companion stats, you're going to get more stat increase if you switch, say, a rank 7 or a, I'm sorry, a rank 12 that's giving you 700 power. So this Radiant, rank 12, is giving me 700 power. If your companion stats and your percentage is above 100%, you will get more power from that being on your companion rather than it being on your main. So for example, I'm getting 300% of my companion stats. So 300% of 700 power is 2100 power. So I'm getting triple the effects for being on my companion rather than my main character. Um, you want to do that for as much slots as possible as long as you hit the 100% or higher mark. Um, your bondings will give you a, the percentages. Um, it's not hard to do the math. Right now I'm getting 95% for each of these and then an additional 15% for having my companion legendary. And as that math is correct, um, 2100 for a Radiant 12 instead of 700 that would have been on your main. Um, as we're on the uh, the topic of companion, another uh, <clears throat> nice stat to look for is your companion influence. Right now, mine is sitting at almost 1200. So as you see here, I am getting an additional 8.7 percent companion stat bonus for having my companion influence almost at 12. Um, you can get this by doing um, the items. The items will give you the companion stat bonus. Um, as you see here on your my sword knot here under manage artifact powers I have the companion influence here at 396. Um, that will uh, you will unlock that with your your cubes of augmentation. So uh, as you unlock them, you have to use cubes to get the stats up. It's not guaranteed that it's going to go up. It's a chance. So uh, right now mine's at 396 out of 400. So I'm not going to waste a bunch of cubes trying to get four more points in it. So step one, know your buffs for your group. Step two, your companion gear. Um, I talked about this a lot in the video I made a month and a half ago about uh, the importance of bondings. We went through and did my stats for rank 8, and we went through and did my stats for bonding rank 12, and we showed the difference. Um, the item level in this game has changed, and there's other ways to go about getting item level than putting the best gear on your main and working on your main first. So um, step 2 would probably be your companion. Getting your getting your companion and knowing what your uh, companion influence is at. As you see, that's 8.9% more. So that's almost 10% more. Um, while we're on the, the fact of companions, um, you see this blue circle that's underneath my feet when I'm in combat. That's called your combat advantage. You get it when you're on one side of the enemy and the, your group's on the other side or in, uh, one of your group is on the other side and initiate combat advantage um, this is another stat that's on your toolbar here or on your stat list under combat advantage mine is at 1600 which means I'm getting 9.4 percent more damage while in combat advantage there's a boon associated with this too so it's not on here but however so I'm getting this plus a 10 percent from the boon which is not on there so I'm getting almost 20% more damage while in combat advantage. So make sure that when you're in combat, especially on bosses, you are standing in a spot where you're gaining combat advantage. That is 20% more. For me, your your stats will be a little different. 
but for me, it's the 9.8% standing and the 10% that you get from the boon. So for, let me find it real quick. Under dark. Common advantage increases by 10%. So, uh, regeneration is obsolete in this game to me, so combat advantage is a must, especially if you're DPS. Combat advantage. Combat advantage. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about, we're going to go uh, dismiss my companion. We're going to talk about the soft cap on armor pin. Uh, the armor pin is speculated to go up. The armor, pap, armor cap armor pin cap, I'm sorry, is supposed to go up next mod, mod 12. The enemies are having more health, they're getting more, uh, you know, higher level increase, so they're saying that the armor pin cap is supposed to go up. Um, it's not certain, but it is speculated, so I'm talking about armor pin in this. So, um, we are going to some of my companion, and we're going to show you the armor pin, and it should, right now, with it being 11B, or 11.5, whichever one you want to call it, the armor pin caps low over 60%. Um, some speculate that it's going to go up to 70% or, you know, 68% or 75%. It's not tested and it's not confirmed yet. So, um, we're going to summon my companion and we're going to show you where my my armor pin gets my uh, damage resistance or resistance ignored, I'm sorry. So, here we are. We're going to show you right now as it sits. I'm sitting at 38%, which is just me standing here. I'm at 65% resistance ignored. Um, that's where I want to sit right now. Um, like I said, I'd see it going up in the near future. But for right now, you want to hit this soft cap at around a little over 60, 60%. Um, mine's a little higher. I'm not going to mess with it right now because of the looming armor pan increase. And so uh, that's that. Uh, the next on the list is your... Um, your build, you want to make sure that you have a correct build. Um, I know a lot of builds out there are different, um, but you want to find a consistent build for what you're trying to stack in your stats and your armor pin and your crit and your power and all that good stuff. Because um, each, each build out there is a little different. Like, for example, my build here, I don't have as much crit chance here some people put this max some people don't to me um, my crit chance sometimes it spikes over 102 percent and i don't have I, there's no point i could probably re-roll my stats here and put this over here or put it somewhere else but uh it's one percent i could manipulate my uh my crit and put more power on my main and keep this here. I could take these two points here and put them here for the three percent, and take off uh, some of yours on my main and put them with power enchantments. Um, again, it's once you hit this level, once you you hit end game, it's all about getting the most out of your stats. It's about getting the most bang for your buck. So, um, I think that's all the the tips I wanted to talk about the companion gear, the stacking up your your main enchantments your rank 12s on your companion first rather than your main it doesn't even have to be rank 12 rank 11 rank you know 10 as long as you're hitting that 100 percent having the best enchantments on your companion is better for you for dps um we talked about the companion influence we talked about the soft cap we talked about knowing your buffs and we talked about combat advantage um that's the five tips that I want to talk about in this video. If you guys feel like I missed something or you want to talk about it, leave it in the chat below. 
and I will also link the bonding video and I will also link a link to the stream so you guys can come back and talk live with me about anything you see in the channel or anything you think I missed or should talk about in the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.